Hello guys, today we'll get acquainted with the main tools and uh, materials that you use when you create a full porcelain. But first I would like to show you some things that I have already created of this material so that you get acquainted with the main characteristics of this clay. Cold porcelain is not the same as just ordinary porcelain that you need to bake. It is not fragile at all and you can bend the flowers and the petals that are made of this clay. For example, you can have a look at this magnolia. The magnolia is also made of cold porcelain and it is really flexible. You can bend the stems to different directions. You can bend uh, the petals. Each of the petals has a wire inside, that's why you can open the flower or close the flower. So you can bend the petals like this and open back. So this is a branch of magnolia. Also I would like to show you my peonies. Right now I have only two flowers, but I would like to make the third one and it will be a whole bunch of flowers. You can have a look at the peony a little bit closer. So the stem, the petals, the flower itself looks real. You even want to smell the flowers. And Actually, you can add some aroma inside, some smell, so that when you smell the flower, you will feel something. So that is magic of cold porcelain. Another flower that is one of my favorites is a dandelion. Just look at this flower. It looks so real. It even has some places that have been eaten by a caterpillar, so to say. Actually, I make caterpillars as well. Sometimes I add caterpillars. So it is so nice. Another thing that I would like to show you is a sea buckthorn. Have a look at this branch. The berries that look real, that you want to taste. The thorns, the leaves, everything is made of cold porcelain, of air dry clay. Actually, it is not that difficult to create such branch. I have a tutorial. Right now, I have a tutorial only in Russian, but I will translate it into English soon. And if you want, you can create a branch like this on your own. Another thing that I wanted to show you is this. These are succulents made of cold porcelain. I adore succulents. You can make succulents of different colors, shapes, sizes, and you can mix them in different ways. For example, these succulents have magnets at their backs, so you can take them away, you can change places, and make different pictures with these succulents. 3D pictures. And also have a look at these small cuties. I have snails. The snails are also made of cold porcelain. Actually, I have a tutorial with English subtitles, the tutorial how to make such snails. And you can make snails of different sizes, different colors. You don't need to have any special molds, just a limited number of tools, and you'll create the snails of your own. So, have a look at the way. So, it is so pretty. And other things that you can make with succulents, succulent gardens. These are the examples of the succulent gardens that you can create. I also have different succulents here, also with the snails. And I have a ladybird or a ladybug. So they are so cute. Also, I have these radish gardens. All the succulents here are made of cold porcelain. I like that you can play with the colors, that you can choose different colors, different succulents. Actually, one succulent can exist in many different colors, and you can choose the color that you need for your arrangement and just play with the different succulents in this way. And you can create not only flowers or plants made of cold porcelain, you can create also insects and I will show you some of the insects that I have created. For example, these beetles. This is a rhinoceros beetle. 
made of clay. It is a nail. And all my beetles, all my insects have magnets inside. You can't see the magnet as it is inside the body. But it is quite strong and you can use the outer magnet to wear these insects as brooches. For example, you can attach the insect on your piece of clothing, use an outer, outer magnet and attach it to the clothing. And it is difficult to take it away, as the magnet inside is quite strong. So have a look at the girl with open wings. You can move the wings in different directions. You can close the wings a little bit and move them. So there is also a magnet inside. And you can use an outer magnet to attach or deattach the insect. Like this. And also you can have a look at the last one. It is a rose beetle or a flowery beetle. It also has a magnet inside. It is difficult to see the color right now, but it is really green, shiny green. And so you can attach them and wear them as brooches, or you can attach them to metal surfaces and just use them as decoration for your house, for example. Or you can attach them to flowers as well and keep them on the flowers. And now let's move on to instruments and materials. And I will show you some materials that I use when I create flowers and box of cold porcelain. So let's start with the clay itself. There are different brands of cold porcelain and different brands can have different characteristics. But you can start creating of one type of clay that you can find. And then if you feel interested, you can try other clays. The type of clay that I use more frequently is modern clay. This is the clay that you can use to create most of the flowers and box of cold porcelain. The clay looks like this. Usually these are packs of 200 grams or 150 grams. And it looks a little bit whitish, but actually it is not that white. And if you want to make a white flower, you need to add some white paints. Usually I add oil paints inside to color the clay. Still, there are clays that are whiter than modern clay. For example, these two types of Thai clay. Super white clay, it is truly white. And Thai clay number seven, it is also quite white. So if I need to make a really white flower, I usually use one of these two types of clays. Also, there is clay that I add almost in all of my flowers and box. It is transparent clay. It is not 100% transparent, it is a little bit blur, but still uh, you can make beautiful things uh, with the help of this clay. For example, I use this clay to make snails. Also, this clay is really, really flexible, and quite often I add this clay to cold porcelain to make cold porcelain more flexible. Also, there is another type of clay, it is also cold porcelain, it is called water dry. Actually, cold porcelain is quite prone to water, and you shouldn't expose the works made of cold porcelain to a lot of water. Usually, I add this clay when I make some brooches. There is also another type of clay that I use. It is not cold porcelain, it is another type of air dry clay, soft clay, and it is really, really light. If we compare the weight of the packs, so here we have 100 grams, and here we have 200 grams. So cold porcelain is much heavier than soft clay. And sometimes I add soft clay to cold porcelain to make my flowers lighter. As for the paints, when I need to color my clay, I add some oil paint inside the clay. But don't add acrylic paints, as they can make the clay a little bit dry. But you can color the ready-made flower with acrylic paints as well. So it is a little bit more difficult to work with acrylic paints. So, if you have little experience with acrylic paints, I would advise you to start with oil paints. As for the adhesive, I mostly use PVA glue or latex glue. You can take ordinary glue for paper, but just try to find a thick glue, as it is more convenient to work with thick glue. Quite often I use a wire to make a frame for my flowers and box. I use a special type of wire, it is floral wire, wrapped in paper, and there are different types of wire. For example, this is Thai wire, and these are Japanese wires. Floral wire has numbers. The smaller the number, the thicker the wire is. So, for example, number 35 is really thin, 
while number 24 is much thicker. In my tutorials I also read the number of the floral wire that you need to use. And let's have a look at the tools that I use most frequently. So first of all you will need manicure scissors with sharp long straight ends. The ends should be quite thin. The next instrument that I use quite frequently is a metal stick with thick and thin ends. I use this stick in many situations, for example when I need to roll a petal on my hand. I will show you an example. For example, let's make a petal with this stick. I take a piece of clay, make a drop, press it, and start rolling with the thick end. I try to spread the clay evenly and roll to different directions. And in this way you can form petals. With a fine end you can make a small cut. Like this. And roll a bit more. So in this way you can make a petal without any special cutters. Still we'll need to make some vines on the petal and for this reason we will need a viner. You just put the petal inside and press the second half of the silken viner. And so you will get the vines like on a real petal. As for some other useful tools, quite frequently I use tweezers. You need to use tweezers of good quality with fine ends. I prefer to use tweezers with the curved ends, but still in many situations it is okay to use tweezers with the straight ends. In different flowers you might need sticks with the balls of different diameter, big balls and smaller balls, and dots for nails. So this is an instrument for nails. But still you don't need these uh, instruments in all flowers. Also quite frequently I use this a little bit curved metal stick with grooves. So there are two grooves on it. With the help of this metal stick sometimes I create patterns on flowers. But in many situations you can do without this metal stick. Also I use craft knife. silicone brush, but still in many situations you can do without it. And some pliers to cut the wire. Also instead of these pliers you can use old scissors to cut the wire. And as I have already mentioned, in many situations you will need silicone viners to leave the vines on petals and leaves. Also if you want to make the process of creating flowers faster you can use such cutters. These are such plastic or metal forms that cut the forms of the leaves and uh, petals that you need. But still in many situations you can do without cutters. So that's it for the tools and materials that I use when I create something of cold porcelain. Of course these are not the only tools that I use, but the most frequently used ones. I hope that this video was useful for you and you are welcome to ask questions if you have any. So wish you a good day.